Welcome to Jovision video tutorial. My name is Aaron and today I'll be introducing our GV recording server. So first let me introduce the outline of this video tutorial. We'll go through the goal of the video tutorial and then we'll introduce what is GV recording server. Next we'll go on to some of the features of the software and then with the uh, case study of a customer based overseas and then followed by the live demo of some of the uh, features and uh, configuration of recording server. Lastly, we will have the FAQ. The goal of this video tutorial, we will go through some of the spec of the uh, GV recording server and let you know how to add IP camera to GV recording server, also how you can access to the web UI of the GV recording server and then followed by understanding some of the features of the recording server. So what is a GV recording server? It's actually a software designed for large scale deployment where you can record maximum of 120 IP devices. So you can use either GV IP devices or you can record IP cameras from third party manufacturers. You can also use the recording server as a video gateway to stream up to 300 channels to other clients uh, such as uh, GV MVR or MultiView from Jovision. Next, we'll go on to the network structure of our recording server. As you can see, it can support maximum of 128 channels from IP devices and third party IP cameras. You can also use the uh, recording server as a video gateway to distribute maximum 300 channels to different GV clients like uh, Multicam, Control Center, and DM MultiView. There are two types of connections between recording server and the IP devices or cameras. First uh, is the active connection. So what do I mean by active connection? The recording server will request for stream directly from the IP devices and third party cameras. So it can be used in a normal LAN environment like uh, when the cameras have a static IP, so you can use active connection and there will be no interruption at all. The second type of connection is passive connection, where only GV IP devices are supported. So what do I mean by passive connection? When you are using passive connection, the IP devices will automatically send its stream directly to recording server. So when do you use passive connection? You can use this when your IP devices are using dynamic IP, where its IP will constantly change, and no matter what IP it changes to, the connection between recording server and the GVIP devices will not be interrupted when you are using passive connection. Next, I'll go on to the recommended minimum PC spec of the recording server. So as you can see, our recording server supports Win 7, Win 8, Windows Server 2008 and 2012. And the minimum CPU supported would be the uh, Sandy Bridge Core i7. And you have to use 16 GB dual channel of RAM. One thing to take note is that our recording server would only run with .NET Framework 3.5 and also you have to use Gigabyte Ethernet cards in order to uh, support the high bandwidth usage of recording server and the number of Ethernet cards that you need would depend on how many channels you are recording or transmitting. For recording server dongle, we have two types of licenses. One is for GVIP device only and one is GVIP device plus third party cameras. So the basic number of ports would be 8, 16, 32 channels with an increment of 4 ports. Maximum is 128. It's the same for both GV only license or GV plus third party license. So here we are using different type of resolution cameras to let you know how much hard disk space you are going to use and how many channels you can record per hard drive. So for instance, you are recording 24 hours a day RTC using H.264 codec and maximum of 128 channels. For 1.3 megapixel IP cameras at 30 frames, you can record maximum 32 channels per hard drive and your storage use would be around 10 terabyte per day. For 2 megapixel IP cameras at 30 frames, you can record maximum 21 channels per hard drive and your storage use would be around 13.5 terabyte a day. If you are using 3 megapixel IP cameras, which is uh, recording at 20 frames, then you can record maximum of 32 channels per hard drive and your storage use would be around 12 terabyte a day. Uh, this information is just for your reference since different hard drives have different write speeds. Next, we'll go on to the network requirement of a recording server. If you are recording 128 channels of 2 megapixel cameras, then you will need at least 2 gigabit LAN network cards. And then each LAN will have a maximum of 64 channels incoming. If you are using the recording server as a video gateway of 300 channels, then you will need 4 giga LAN for transferring 300 channels to clients. Uh, each LAN would have a maximum of 75 channels. Uh, this information is also just for your reference since uh, different cameras will have different bit rates. 
Next, we'll go on to some of the features of the recording server. So our recording server can run as a Windows service, so there is no need for a user to log into Windows or manually start up recording server. Once you put up the computer, the recording server will be running automatically. Also, you can remotely log in to a recording server web UI using IE or non-IE browsers for configuration. Once you log into your recording server's web UI, when you add the cameras into your recording server, you will be able to see the bandwidth usage of every IP camera in the camera list. So this is useful for customers if they wish to uh, control their bandwidth and see how much overall bandwidth they are using. You can also see how much bandwidth each network card is using uh, in the server information tab of a recording server's web UI. One of the most important features of a recording server is to uh, reduce camera loading. So it can act as a video gateway where the camera only has to send one stream to the recording server and the recording server can transmit maximum of 300 channels into different clients like such as control center and uh, VM multi view. There are four types of recording modes for recording server. First is the round the clock recording where you can record 24 hours. The second one would be motion detection recording. And the third would be IO triggered recording but for this IO triggered recording mode, only GVIP devices are supported. Uh, next would be the schedule mode where customer can choose when to record RTC and when to record motion detection or IO trigger. GV recording server supports dual stream, so uh, you can use uh, a camera with uh, multiple stream and the first stream will be used to record and the second smaller stream can be used for live view to uh, reduce the uh, CPU loading. Next feature will be the storage group feature for recording server. So here you can add different storage groups uh, using different drives and you can distribute the cameras into each storage group so as not to uh, overload the hard drive. Recording server also has the keep days feature where users can specify how many days they want to keep their recordings and database in their storage. So the maximum number of keep days supported right now is 180 days. Uh, once the keep days is reached, then the recording server will start deleting the oldest data so once you have recorded data in the recording server, how can you do playback? You can either use the uh, single player through the uh, recording server web UI or you can download remote view log from our website and use it to remotely view recordings in recording server. The next main feature of recording server is to add as a video gateway. So you can use recording server as a video gateway to transmit maximum 300 channels to some other GV applications such as uh, GVD via MVR, our GIS, our control center, remote view log, multi view, or mobile server. We have a new application called GVH Recording Manager, which you can install on uh, remote PCs for remote monitoring. So, a uh, recording server can also transmit the uh, streams into H Recording Manager directly. Recording server also supports GV VSM and GV Backup Center applications. You can use GV Backup Center to backup the recordings that you store in your recording server. You can also use uh, GV VSM to uh, receive alarm notification when something happens on your recording server, such as a camera disconnection or a motion detection. When you are using recording server as a video gateway, you can also use the RTSP protocol to stream video from the recording server into third-party applications such as a VLC, a QuickTime Player, or Windows Media Player. You can also do some advanced query using a recording server's web UI. So for example, you can do event list query where you can see a list of uh, recorded events and you can double click to do playback. You can also do a preview query where you are able to see a snapshot of the recorded event so you can quickly look through what you are looking for. For composite information query, you will be able to see a list of the events and the position of the camera on your e-map and also you will have a remote playback window directly on the uh, event list query. The next feature that I will go on to is our e-map for recording server. So here you can import maps or integrate with Google Map to display where the cameras are located. We also support the Google Street View, so you can right click on the camera and directly see the Street View. Users can see all the cameras live view and Street View via the eMap query in the recording server web UI. In order to keep users updated on the status of the recording server, we also support email notification of alarms. So we have two types of notifications. One is the system notification, where users can be notified of their camera status when the connection is lost. Uh, they will also be notified when their USB protection key is being removed. We also have a storage notification where we keep users updated on the status of their storage, such as a uh, disk full, 
disk error, disk being removed, recording failure, uh, recycling start, uh, start keep days operation, or motion detection. As mentioned previously, recording server can connect directly to GVVSM, uh, so you can send alerts directly to Vital Sign Monitor. So what are the events that we can send? We can send camera events and recording server events. Uh, so for camera events, we have motion detected, camera connection loss, camera connection resume, and video loss. For recording server events, we have service start or stop, this foo, and this error. So one thing to take note is that your GVVSM has to be version V 8.59 or higher. Here we have the comparison chart between recording server and MVR. So when are you going to use recording server or MVR? If today the user wants to use I.O. or video analysis features such as a missing object and intrusion alert, then you also have to use MVR since a recording server does not have any video analysis. Also, a recording server does not support post, so you also have to use MVR if you want to use post integration. Uh, the number of cameras supported for recording server is 128 compared to MVR where the maximum is only 32. Uh, for the remote apps, uh, recording server supports a control center, a VSM, our mobile applications, and our GVMVR. For MVR, we support control center, VSM, our mobile apps, and center V2. This chart is to compare the different versions of a recording server. So if you are using recording server V1.23, then you can only support the uh, VSM V8.59. If you are using recording server V1.24, then you can also use it with backup center V1.12 and VSM. If you are using recording server V1.25, then all three backup centers, center V2 and VSM will be supported. Let's go on to the case study for recording server. So we have a customer in Qatar where they have a multi-story building with lots of cameras. So they use recording server to record all the cameras. Their recording server also acts as gateway and transmit the uh, video streams to uh, GV control center matrix or video wall, where they have security guards doing all the live monitoring. For the live demo of recording server, I will go through some features such as uh, how to add cameras, uh, how to set up passive connection, how to configure storage setting, how to create an EMAP, uh, show the advanced query feature where you can do queries such as a uh, composite information query and also how to connect recording server with a uh, control center and display all these video streams in the matrix. I'll go through the live demo on another live demo video clip. Finally, let's go on to the FAQ section. So a lot of users, they want to do some backup for the recordings in their recording server. So let's say if they have a 20 terabyte video clip, how are they gonna do the backup? So starting with a recording server V1.24, you can connect recording server directly to a backup center V1.12 to do backup. Or you can also purchase an additional recording server and connect the same IP devices to the second recording server. And so you can have a duplicate recording on both recording servers. This is the end of the recording server video tutorial. If you need more product information, you can go to our website at www.jovision.com.tw. If you have any technical questions and you need our help, you can also email them to support at jovision.com.tw. Thank you.